Hey everyone, Ellery here, the health adventurer. Welcome to my channel, or uh, welcome back if you are a subscriber, welcome. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about a connection I've been making between um, candida and the autoimmune issues I have been having. Um, so just to you know, give you a little bit of a, an idea of what I've been dealing with, in case you haven't seen my other videos, um, I've been dealing with basically lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and scleroderma. Um, so I've been dealing with all those um, different things, plus a little bit of Raynaud's phenomenon as well, so some autoimmune issues there. And um, particularly the last couple months I've been having um, more issues with that lately, um, although eating raw foods and eating fruit, like nothing but fruit, has been helping me actually. It sounds strange, but um, eating eating only fruit has been has been really helping my, my symptoms, particularly with, with, yes, particularly with rheumatoid arthritis. So not what I would have expected um, going into doing all my research and everything. Um, but basically, you know, what I've been doing, I'm not sure what that is, DMARDS, um, what I've been doing is I've just been doing a lot of my own own research, and um, yeah, I don't know what that. I, you have to explain what that is. Meth, metho, metho. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I've just been doing a lot of my own research, and um, I've been sharing that with you guys. And disease modifying drugs. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I try to stay away from the the uh, the drug. The, the yeah. All all the all these you know, patented drugs and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to go for a more natural approach. And so that's that's what my channel is really about is is, you know, finding finding these things that um, you know, that are natural to us. And, you know, whether it's herbs or um food and I've actually found that to be really, really helpful for me. Um eating, you know, a cleansing diet, I've been dealing with um basically lupus, scleroderma and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, all in, you know, varying, you know, varying things affect those those different things. So what I have found um, is that there is this. I've been making this connection um, between um, candida and uh, rheumatoid arthritis for myself. Um, and I used to think candida was sort of this like umbrella term that naturopaths use to just kind of dismiss everything as candida and you know everything's candida you know but actually I I disagree now with myself um I actually I've I've found yeah so thrush is is something yes that uh you can you can have uh when you have candida um and I definitely noticed that the more fruit that I eat you know it, it actually it improves my hands and then yeah and then you become you you find that this stuff moves around a little bit more. So yes, some of the itching is is a, a symptom of of candida as well. Um, so basically, what happened was I tried. You know, I've I've been eating really nothing but fruit because that has been my hands will do this weird thing if I if I don't do this if I don't eat fruit, um, my hands will kind of lock up or close up on me, and it's a very big problem because. I obviously need to use my hands and that affects my quality of life and everything else. Um, but what happened was I decided to go on like a cleanse um, based on the recommendation of someone who I know and trust. Um, and she was like, you know, try juicing, you know, and try try eating, just try, just go raw, you know. So I went raw and I, I did this, uh, I think like 10 months, or it's not 10 months, 10 weeks ago. Um, yeah, morning stiffness, right, exactly. Um, so those are all things, you know, rheumatoid arthritis uh, symptoms. Um, so, and, and by doing this, um, I found that my hands started working again. And I was really, like, shocked, like, oh my gosh, like, this is really crazy that this, this actually is working for me. Um, but what I also found is that by, you know, having such a basically a limited diet, um, that I noticed which foods were really causing 
problems for me and which ones weren't. So I started noticing that vegetables actually seem to cause my rheumatoid arthritis. Every single time I try a vegetable, I have some sort of problem. Um, the, the vegetable I've had the least amount of problems with is tomatoes. It seems like I can eat some tomatoes for a little while, but then eventually it does seem to cause some problems. Um, I'll have to try it again here and there and see, see if it wasn't something else, but I'm pretty sure tomatoes do cause a problem for me. And it's not really surprising, tomatoes are a nightshade vegetable, it could be something to do with that. Um, uh, also bell peppers cause problems, bok choy causes problems, and recently I tried corn. And the reason why I'm even trying, um, yeah, I'm just doing a cleanse right now, and I am still taking a lot of supplements, so, you know, I'm, I'm very conscientious of that. I'm not too concerned for the time being. I want to at least get myself cleaned out and see which foods that I can tolerate down the line. So that's why I keep trying to incorporate vegetables, because they are higher in protein. And, you know, I do notice that I don't necessarily meet my protein intake. Um, I should be getting anywhere between 37 to 40 grams of protein per day based on my, my body weight. Um, but I tend to get, between, you know, maybe around like 33 or so, 32, something like that every day um, based on what, I eat, what I'm eating. So I am a little bit under with the protein right now. But again, I'm not, right now I'm not focused on building. I'm focused on moving my lymph, getting stuff out of me that doesn't belong in my body that's stuck there. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing, and, and anytime I try to eat something else, um, it seems to impact my hands negatively. So I'm just doing with I'm just going with what my body is needing right now. I'm just listening to my body. Um, so I have, but I have, you know, I am also thinking about like, hey, I don't want to end up with some sort of problem down the line either with like having not having enough protein and that sort of thing. So I have been trying to incorporate vegetables, and every time I try to do that. Uh, it, it seems to cause a problem in corn. Um, I thought corn was going to be okay um, based on just eating it and not having a reaction right away because most of the time my body is pretty sensitive. Most of the time I do, if I eat something, I notice a reaction within maybe 20 minutes. Um, that's, that's just what I've noticed. But in this case, that didn't happen. Well, it kind of, it kind of did. And, and I kind of ignored the signs. So what happened was I had some, I had some corn, some sweet corn and what it, it created some itching on my elbow and then it, it created a little bit more itching throughout my body um, the more of it that I ate and then I just it kind of went away and I was like okay like it's probably increasing some candida in me I'll just take some olive leaf extract or some herbs or something and I'll be fine um, but I was wrong <laughs> what happened was um, you know I went to bed and you know over the course of the evening you know several hours later I woke up and I couldn't move my hands so they were closed up on me again um, so and the only thing that I did differently was I had the corn because um, I try if I'm gonna try something different I always try to make sure that that's it's the only there's only one thing that I'm changing um, so it, it was definitely an interesting um, thing that happened and you know you know I was also I think before I, I noticed I had this this problem with my hands um, I had some bloating and and you know it was I, it was unusual for me to have bloating because when I eat fruit I don't I don't get bloated um, so I, I also by having this experience um, I was starting to make a connection you know that it is very very possible that that whatever uh, foods, yes, many foods do have additives, and I do react to those as well. Uh, you know, if I go out to eat or something like that, like even at a raw food restaurant, I do have reactions as well. So, and again, they're using a lot of vegetables and stuff too. So, you know, it could be vegetables or whatever. Um, but I, I tried a spice uh, from Trader Joe's, and it caused some reactions to my hands too. So yeah, I definitely am very careful as well with uh, with spices and things like that. Um, but what I noticed about you know I was starting to think you know it is very possible that that all these issues that I'm having with the hands that really that's, that's just kind of a, another extent of a candida overgrowth. Aren't you worried about long-term damage whilst you're experimenting? Not really. Um, I will be doing some, you know, some tests at some point, you know, when, when I feel comfortable, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I think I may just do some tests over the internet, like the, the lab work that you do with a rheumatologist, like those ones I'll probably just do. I don't really want to have to go see a rheumatologist and, you know, get categorized as having some autoimmune disorder that's apparently incurable when, you know, there are many people that do overcome these things. 
Um, you know, so I, I just don't want to have to have that conversation at all. Um, but, you know, doing a physical and doing, you know, making sure over the years the joints get more eroded. Yeah, but see, what I've, what I've noticed, again, you know, is when I eat the fruit, I don't have that problem. Um, so as when I eat a lot of fruit, um, like I said, I do not have, you know, issues and, and yes, I know it's, I don't believe it's just remission. If it was just remission, I wouldn't have an issue every single time that I eat vegetables. So there's definitely a trigger there. And I really truly believe that it is related to candida. Um, like I was saying with the corn, that's that, that actually made the most extreme reaction. Um, so even though I didn't have a reaction right away, it was kind of like a delayed reaction. Um, in, in comparison to the other things that it seems to cause a little bit of like, you know, an issue with my joints at first, um, you know, for example, like, like the bok choy or carrots or some of these other things it, it, and then it just, it kind of went away. It didn't cause like this real extreme thing where my hands were just completely closed up. Um, but it's, so it seems like corn, um, corn is something that, um, I've heard to be kind of fungus causing or something like this. And I didn't really know what that meant, um, but now, now having the experience, it, it does seem, you know, being able to see that, um, you know, eating the corn has sugar, it's inflammatory. So yeah, corn has um, a, a lot of starch, and candida and fungus, like they tend to really, I guess they like starch. So it seems to be, yeah, so steering clear of corn definitely, definitely learned uh, to stay away from that. <laughs> um, it does seem like there is definitely a connection with with uh, with the fungus and and having those kinds of symptoms. So it wouldn't be surprising to me if most of the autoimmune issues that I'm dealing with are actually like maybe even caused by, um, you know, not saying that's what it is, but you know that's my theory that it is, it, it could actually even be caused by some sort of candida overgrowth, especially considering that I used to eat a lot of, um, you know, I was vegetarian for a while. I used to eat a lot of grains. Um, you know, I, I think I really overdid it with wheat and, and, and that sort of thing. And I did, when I was in high school, I did notice some itching in my body as well um, from eating a lot of wheat. And I kind of like intuitively knew that I needed to cut back a little bit. Um, so grains and, and corn and things like that, things that are a little bit starchy do seem to flare up candida. And it does, and that always leads, for me, it always leads to um, symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and again which I don't have those symptoms when I eat fruit. Now of course the other issue with eating only fruit is taking care of your teeth right because it's a lot of sugar it's a lot of acids and things going on the teeth so I've been getting really extreme about taking care of my teeth um, so basically every time I eat I make sure to rinse my mouth out with um, you know with water and with baking soda so I'm just neutralizing the acids and making sure, you know, that, you know, I'm, I'm getting my teeth pretty much cleaned after a half hour of doing that. I usually, I'll brush my teeth as well. Because you don't want to brush your teeth, you know, right after eating something acidic because you can wear away on the enamel. That's not good. Um, so I just make sure I get all that sugar off. Um, you know, so I'm going to try to eat like bigger meals um, less often. That's a little bit hard for me to do. I really like to graze. Um, and especially with fruit, it's very, um, it's very filling. It's got a lot of, it's good. It's very hydrating. It's, um, you know, it's a lot of water content in it. Um, but it can be hard to eat, you know, a lot of fruit at once. So I, you know, I try to balance it out where I'm not, I'm not stuffing myself too much. I'm not creating pain or whatever. Um, but I do try to, you know, be conscientious to, you know, to eat. I'm, I'm trying to eat bigger meals so that that's not a problem. Also, what I've been doing, um, I've been doing, uh, I was I was doing this for a little while and I stopped. I had uh, it was clove oil, I've been mixing it with water, just using that as like a, a mouth rinse, like a mouth wash. Um, before, I think I was putting too much clove oil in, so I think I just kind of, I didn't want to do it because it wasn't pleasant. It was just, I thought it was too much and I, I stopped doing it, so I, I didn't really think to just dilute it more. So what I've, just, what I've been doing is I've been doing um a drop of clove oil into like a little a little jar and then I just put enough water in to you know to rinse my mouth out with pretty much and I just use that as my mouthwash every day um, and I'm also gonna start doing like an iodine rinse um, iodine is supposed to kill bacteria and also strengthen the teeth as well um, I guess it's also important to make sure that your selenium is is up that you got enough selenium in your system to use the iodine um, I guess those both affect the thyroid 
So you need to make sure that you're, you know, you got enough selenium for those kinds of rinses because you do absorb some of those things into your body as well. Um, when you, you know, when you, anytime you rinse something or put something into your mouth, it does get absorbed into your body too. Um, so those are some things that I've been doing just to, to help out with my teeth because, you know, I mean, I haven't had any real major problems yet. You know, I do have to be concerned, obviously, to pay attention though. And what I've been doing is I've, I've kind of just been looking at my teeth every day, um, every time I brush my teeth, just to notice if there's any changes or not. And it does seem like the fruit is a little bit hard on my teeth. And now, granted, I, I going into this, I didn't really have like the best teeth. Um, you know, I definitely, I had low density, um, low bone density from taking Nexium and stuff like that. Um, you know, at least I believe that's what it's from. Um, it definitely causes that, and I was on it for seven years. Um, so that's one, one thing, just going into it, that, you know, I'm already kind of at a disadvantage there. And, you know, most of us going into raw foods and stuff like that, we're already disadvantaged with some sort of problem. So, you know, it's hard to always know, like, you know, if, if from the outside, if, if someone is, if what they're doing with raw foods is causing a problem or if they actually already had that problem in the first place from a previous diet. Um, so anyway, um, but definitely the fruit is still, you know, regardless of my health previous, um, it still can be hard on the teeth, you know, if you're not really careful. So I have been trying to eat a little bit more like avocado and coconut because that does not have as much as much sugar but it also doesn't seem to impact um, my body too much negatively and it, you know it has a little bit of fat so you know it's 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 good to get a little bit of, of those other things it adds a little bit of, it's just a small amount of variety into my diet besides you know all the different fruits that I eat um, so I've been doing that to help out as well um, but definitely the fruit for me does have the least impact on my health least negative impact on my health you know my hands work um, you know, it's really great. So I want to keep doing it as long as it's helping me. Um, you know, if I, if, again, if I notice down the line that, you know, let's say I do some blood work or something and I see, hey, my protein's kind of low or something, then yeah, you know, I'm going to consider that. And, and I will look into other ways that maybe I could get protein. And I've been thinking about that. Um, but, you know, for right now, I'm not really concerned, you know, just on a short term, just for a cleanse. Um, and hey, and if I find out that, like, I've got perfect blood work after doing all this, then that's awesome too. Then I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I don't know at what point I'm going to do that, um, but for right now, I'm still, you know, I'm getting close to that point of wanting to, you know, maybe do like a physical or something like that. Um, but it's going to be hard for me to know whether or not, because I didn't do a, a physical before starting this diet, um, it's going to be hard for me to know like what's causing what if certain things were there beforehand or not. So I'm pretty much just going by like how I feel and, and I'm just listening to my body as much as possible. Um, so yeah, so that's, but the, the candida thing is really, really interesting. Um, you know, especially I'm doing some other research too. Um, so I, I think I've mentioned that, you know, I think it was like a year, year and a half ago that I had some blood work from a rheumatologist that showed that I had low C3C and low C4C levels. Um, so those are complement protein levels that are a little bit low. And those are, you know, classified as indicating factors that you can have lupus or something like that or something in that family. Um, but what it also did say, you know, I think it was, I don't know if it was WebMD, it was some sort of like kind of, you know, conventional medicine site, you know, whatever. And it did say that fungus can be a cause for low complement levels as well. And candida is a fungus. It's also a parasite. So um, again, it wouldn't be surprising to me if that was even the cause of, of some of the autoimmune issues that I had. And, you know, the kinds of foods that we eat in our diet um, do seem to feed candida quite a bit. Um, I also wanted to mention just, you know, um, this thing that I've been learning about as well, on, uh, just listening to Dr. Robert Morse, is iridology. Um, so iridology is the study of the eyes and how it relates to the health of your body. And, um, you know, from what I, just looking at my eyes and what, what seems to be there is that there's a little bit of green. So some of that, you know, there's only two um, natural eye colors according to iridology. There's brown and there's blue. And some brown eyes are actually blue eyes. Um, if you look at, uh, look up Fully Rock Christina and you look up her, she's got a video where she's talking about how she actually used to have brown eyes and now she kind of has like hazel eyes. She she has like a blue on the outside and she's got some kind of brownish green on the inside. Um, so, and according to iridology, you know, if you've got, if you have blue eyes and there's green in your eyes, that is related to basically lymphatic 
like build up and and that can also be uh, an indicator of yeast or candida so again um you know all these things seem to point to and i have some green in my eyes i definitely you know i can see it if i look real close i haven't noticed any changes in my eyes since i've eaten raw so it will be interesting to see if if that does change um like it it has in other people's like fully raw christina um, but you know, that's just, that's just something else uh, I'm thinking about as well that, Hey, you know, that, that could be, um, very much what's going on. And there is also a little bit of like orange in my eyes, uh, in certain areas, which can be an indication of sulfur and apparently, um, candida also like sulfur. So there's, there's definitely, there's a lot of issues, um, that can lead to this one thing of like candida being over, you know, overgrown, for example, antibiotics, you know, taking birth control, like I've done both of those things. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a very common thing. And I think this is why naturopaths tend to, you know, say, you know, that everyone may have some sort of candida overgrowth. It sounds kind of, you know, they could sound hoaxy, you know, I, I get it. But, you know, the more that I've been researching and the more that I've noticed just with my own symptoms and what I'm dealing with, you know, it's, it does seem like it actually may be accurate. Um, so, just something I've noticed. Um, I don't know if there was anything else I wanted to mention about that, but um, yeah, so Candida. <laughs> so I've just been very careful, um, you know, and according to Dr. Robert Morris, I, I should also mention in his, his uh, theory with Candida is that Candida and, and, and yeast actually feed more on the starchy sugars like glucose, um, fr whereas fructose, um, they apparently they are not really too interested in. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, um, but it, it, even if even if they do feed on some of of that fructose, uh, the fructose, the sugars or the um, the fruit, it moves stuff through your body because it's astringent. It's getting those free radicals out. So there's still to me there's you know I've seen improvement with you know if if I have a candida issue, I've seen improvement since doing fruit. And um, also I should mention too, I don't think I've mentioned this before, when I started when I started eating all the fruit, I did notice uh, my tongue changed colors. So it went from, you know, I don't know if it looks, it looked kind of pink, but also kind of dark maybe on the sides. It didn't look super healthy, um, but then it changed, it, it got like a green coating, then it went white, and then eventually it went away. And then, and then I've seen it come back again too sometimes. So it seems like it will, like, it seems like it might be clearing out, you know, like, like rounds of yeast that are, that are stuck in my body. Um, that's like my theory as to what's going on with that. Um, it's just, you know, if, if, I don't think it's increasing yeast, you know, a lot of people say that like with candida, if you have an overgrowth of candida, you want to stay away from fruit. But, um, for me, I don't think that's true because if I had a candida problem before and if that's related to my hands, well, my hands have been doing better since I've been eating fruit. So it does seem to me that fruit, fruit does seem to be very, very helpful for me. Um, so I'm going to continue doing that. I think I'm just going to keep trying, like I was saying, to protect my teeth. I'm going to keep trying to make sure that I'm really particular about, you know, rinsing my, my mouth with baking soda every single time I eat. Um, even if it's a snack or something like that, and then trying to basically brush my teeth like three times a day and doing those, doing those different mouthwashes, I think that should really help. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on it. You know, I will go to the dentist at some point, get a good cleaning, you know, make sure everything is looking good. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's a process, it's a journey. There's no real perfect way of doing things either, you know, like, like I said, like the fruit is really great, but I still got to watch out for my teeth. So it's not, it's not a perfect thing, but the way that I look at it, my overall health and my whole body is really appreciating it. You know, I do generally feel like I have more energy. Um, you know, I just, I just generally feel better. My hands are working better. Um, you know, I've had a lot of injuries like with my knees and stuff and, and, and with my, you know, with my joints and now I'm able to walk around a little bit more. I was for a while, I was actually using like those carts that they have at the grocery store, um, to, to go grocery shopping. And I don't do that anymore. Um, cause I just, I feel better. So there's been a lot of really great, um, things notice. I've noticed a lot of improvement since eating raw, since eating fruit, a lot of fruit, um, so I'll definitely keep you guys posted on everything that's been happening with that. 
Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the Candida. Um, so I also have some, I've had for a long time, for like a couple years now I think, I've had um, like some toe fungus problems and I remember going to thinking that, I don't know why I thought to ask this to my rheumatologist if I read something somewhere, but I had asked, you know, like for her to look at my feet and tell me if it was related at all to any kind of rheumatological issue and she said, oh no, that's fungus, that's so hard to get rid of. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if it's really hard to get rid of because actually when I put, when I, when I put, um, what's it called? Oregano oil. That's it. Oregano oil. So I, I use oregano oil and then I'll sometimes I'll mix some tea tree oil in there. I'll just dilute it with um, some coconut oil and I put it on my toes. Um, that has helped a lot. Um, but according to Doug Kaufman from Know the Cause, um, that's another great channel to check out on YouTube. Um, he's got some also interesting theories about fungus and cancer. So that's also another thing where it's like, hmm, fungus, 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 candida. Um, Anyway, but he talks about, you know, if you have a, a fungal infection like in your toes, it's also in your gut. So I was, I kind of stopped doing the oregano oil on my toes just to see, just for a minute, to see if, you know, by taking some more antifungals, if that will help um, eliminate the candida in my toes. I just want to see if there's, if that, if that does help or not. I may still have to go back to, you know, putting putting the uh, oregano oil on there, but I do have to be like super diligent about putting it on there like, you know, twice a day sometimes, you know, to make sure that it's, it's under control. Um, but that is an interesting thing, you know, I've had that, I've had that um, infection for a while and it definitely does help, um, you know, the oregano oil. Some people do ingest oregano oil for candida. Um, I did do some of that for a little bit, but it can be a little bit hard on the liver. Um, generally essential oils are not really that great to ingest. Um, they can be a little bit toxic to the body, so I try not to do that too much. But olive leaf extract is a good one um, that apparently does not have a negative impact on the liver. It's not a, an essential oil so much. I don't think it's it's some sort of extract. Um, so I've been taking um, olive leaf extract in glycerin. Um, so I try not to do the alcohol because again, like alcohol is not really good for your liver. So I I try to steer away from that, but. Um, so I've been doing that in glycerin and, uh, that seems to, it does seem to move some things around too when I take that, you know, it's, it seems like it could be, it could appear almost like, like it's making the problem worse because it might feel itchy or something like that, but then ultimately it ends up feeling better. So candida is an interesting one because there can be a lot of like die off symptoms. Sometimes it can feel like things are getting worse and actually getting better. Um, for example, you can have headaches and all kinds of stuff. And I definitely, when I first went raw, I think my first two, like, week or two, I felt really foggy. Like, th again, those are symptoms of candida, actually. So, and I, I never would have suspected candida until I was, like, doing more research. And, and now that I have, you know, had some of these different types of reactions to different foods, um, I've noticed that it does, again, it does really seem to be uh, connected to candida. So it's really interesting. Um, so yeah, so olive, olive leaf extract is a good one, um, for candida. So I've been taking that. And I also, um, I know Dr. Robert Morris has some pretty strong herbs from what I've heard. So I want to give those a, tr a try. And I, I listen to him a lot and, and he definitely has some really, um, interesting things to say. He's got some very interesting insight. So, and I definitely agree with a lot of what he says. Um, just based on my own experience, you know, at first listening to him, I thought like, you know, this could be just a scam or whatever. Um, you know, so I was like, I, I don't really know about eating this, you know, all fruit or whatever. This sounds weird. Um, which it does sound weird based on what we normally eat. Um, but in my own experience, I've definitely, I've noticed that, Hey, you know, actually there might be something to this. Um, but he's got some herbs. He, he's an herbalist and he has some, some different formulas and one of them he has is called Parasite M. So I ordered some Parasite M for myself. I want to give that a try. And I want to see if that works any better than the olive leaf extract that I've been taking. You know, I kind of want to speed up the process a little bit. And so that's that's why I'm interested in maybe trying some herbs um, to try and see if I can, you know, maybe detox a little bit faster. Um, you know, detoxing too much at once can be a little bit overwhelming, um, so I definitely don't want to do that, but uh, I feel like I'm in a place now where I could try some herbs. 
Um, I also ordered one of his, he has a kidney herb. Um, I want to try that as well. Um, I know for sure, like, Nexium can cause some pretty serious damage to the kidneys. Um, so I thought maybe some kidney support would be good. Plus, it also recommends, if you're going to get Parasite M, there's a couple different herbs that he has where he'll recommend to take another herb alongside of it. And he does recommend doing the kidney, his, he calls it the kidney and bladder formula. So he recommends taking that with that one. So I thought I might try those and, and see how they go for me. So I'll give you guys an update uh, once I try those, let you know how that how that goes, uh, if it works for me or not. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, Candida. You know, I haven't really talked a lot about detox symptoms um, too much with, with what I've been going through. Um, so I'll probably do another video on that at some point just to, to kind of tell you guys like what kinds of detox symptoms I've experienced and... Uh, and how I've been how I've been working through that so I'll, I'll do a video on that uh, next time so keep an eye out for that and uh, other than that uh, have a good Sunday um, enjoy the day and enjoy the rest of your weekend I'll see you in the next video bye bye guys